In this short video, we're going to show you how you can model smooth shapes in Aspire. So over in the design tab, we're going to go into this tool here that will enable us to create smooth shape components. And when we click on that, that will open up the form. So the first thing we need to do is assign a vector. So we've got a vector here, and then we're just going to take a look at our view from this angle over here. Okay, so first off, we can see in the form we've got two sliders and this will enable us to create a smooth shape. So this tool is really good for creating S shape smooth parts. And so the top option over here will enable us to kind of increase the top portion of our shape and then the base as demonstrated here in this graphic, will increase or reduce the base. So we can create this kind of bell bottom over here, or we could create a rounded shape. So let's just have a look at the effects of using the slider and see what happens in the 3D view. Okay, so you can see here, we've got uh, quite a rounded top. It's going down, let's just tilt our view. Okay, it's going down and then it goes into a nice kind of flick at the bottom and you can play around with the slider to just uh, change the settings until you like the look of what you're seeing here in the 3D view. And this very much is what it's all about. You just play around with the settings until you're happy with the results that you get. And you can see that as we are moving the slider, we are getting instant feedback on that shape. And we're able to see that and visualize that here in the 3D view. And so if you're happy with the look of the part that you've got here, you can give your component a name and you can just go ahead and call this shape one for example go ahead press apply and then we can close out and then over in our levels tab at the top here you can see that shape one has been added to our level we can see that component there in our component tree likewise if we go to our components tab over here we can see that there we can switch off the visibility of that component and then we can switch that back on again and with that, we can move that around. It has no relation to the vector that we used to create it. And whilst we haven't edited the actual shape itself, if we press E on the keyboard, that can take us back into the Create Smooth Shape, where E means we're editing the shape, where we have access to all of the settings that we use to actually create that shape. And we can make further edits to that if we wanted to. Now, whilst we're in this form, if we didn't like the look of our shape and we just wanted to start again, or we just wanted to remove it completely, we could just press delete on the keyboard and then that will delete that shape. So now let's create a new shape. We're gonna take that vector and again, let's just use the top and base sliders to create a shape for us. And now we're going to look at the effects of adjusting the handles that we're presented with in the 3D view. And all of these enable us to control the overall height of our parts that we're creating. So we're going to start with this handle over here. So this is our limit handle. Now currently the limit is at 100%, which we can see here in this field. You can also see that over here in the form. So it's limiting that at 100% of the overall shape that we've got here. So we're not actually seeing any effect here. Um, but if we click on the handle and then we start to slide that down, you'll see that what it does is it essentially flattens the shape off where it's limiting. And we're basically saying, I want you to limit this shape to a particular percentage and then it will create a flat top for you, which is a really interesting effect. Now, if you wanted to be more specific about that percentage, you could simply go into the field and then type in a value, for example, and then you could go ahead and enter that in. So I've changed that to 40. You can also make use of the form also. And like I said, you can make some really nice shapes here. So that's the limit option. Next up, we've got the base height. So currently we have zero base height, but we can apply a base height. And basically this is a kind of a, a plane or just vertical height that we apply underneath our component. And we can do that by clicking on that and then just bringing that up like so. So you can see those vertical walls there. So you could give that a little bit of a base height like so. 
me move on to this option here. So this is your scale. So this kind of limits the height of the shape by scaling the shape uh, whilst retaining the profile. So if we click on that, we can bring that up like so. We can bring that down and you can do that there. And then over here, we have our total height. So the total height currently is displayed as 0.6972. Uh, and this is a combination of the base height along with the, the scaled height as well. And so we can see in our form at the moment, we have a scale of 109.7%. We've got a base height of 0.1048. That gives us a total height of 0.6972. And if I change this handle here, what it does is it kind of scales everything proportionally. So remembering these values over here, if we alter this, you'll see that both of those values will change because we've altered the total height of our part there. So it kind of does that proportionally. Now, whilst you are in the Create Smooth Shape tool, you can actually alter the outline of your shape by pressing N on the keyboard to node edit that. Okay, so you can see we've now got access to handles and I can use, I can move those handles like so. And then we can just come out there and then just right click to come out of node edit mode and then select our shape again, where again, I'm able to access uh, the different handles there to further edit my shape. And then once you're happy with the shape, you can simply just apply it and close out there. So we're going to take that shape and we're actually going to press control to create a copy of that shape. And again, if we wanted to further edit the shape, we can, if we press N on the keyboard, we could go over here. You can see we're able to edit the shape there and it will update that for us. And we can go back and press E on the keyboard. Once we come out of node edit mode, we can press E on the keyboard. And then again, we have further uh, tools to then go ahead and further edit that shape. Now it's worth noting that if we just come out here and then if we use the transform handles and we kind of stretch that and take it out of its primitive shape, then when we select that and then press E on the keyboard, we no longer have access to the original Create Smooth Shape tool because we've took it out of its primitives. And so we've kind of lost the ability to uh, kind of make further edits to that. And instead it's just taken us to the standard component properties tool. So be mindful of that. So if you do use the kind of, if you stretch it out and take it totally out of its primitives, you will no longer have access to be able to go back in to edit that part. So now let's just take this and we're just going to delete it. Go back to our design tab and then we're going to go back into the create smooth shape. Now this time we're going to take a look at this vector over here. Okay, so again, let's just move the slider into a position in order for us to create our initial shape. Now the shape that we're using has internal corners. And you can see that with this star, it's a nice effect. However, if we wanted to kind of preserve the internal corners and sharpen them up, we can use this option here. And if we check that, that will just then create those nice sharp corners there. And you can see we can get a much better result, which is really nice. So let's just put that back into that view over here. So next up, we're going to take a look at the effect of creating a shape between two vectors. So here we have a circle and we have another circle over here. So let's go over to our slider and then we'll use the top and base sliders to create our initial shape. So let's just drag that over here. And then we'll drag that over there like so. And so you can see it's creating a shape that is essentially the profile is running or sweeping between the two vectors. Now we have another option where we take the profile and blend it from one vector to another. Well, we can use this option to blend to inner vectors. And if we check that, you can see that the software has swept that smooth profile from the outside in where it fills the center with a flat shape, which we can create nice results from. So now we're going to look at one final option that we have available to us when creating smooth shapes.
So I'm going to click on to this handle over here. Okay, so here you'll see we're able to make further changes to the shape that we're creating. We can alter the combine mode and change the way that we combine our created shape with other components. And then we also have the option to apply a fade and a tilt. So we're going to look at the fade option to begin with. So we're just going to put this in the top view for now. And then we're going to check the fade option. So the fade option enables us to fade down our component at a percentage that we give it in our little form that we've got here. So the first thing we need to do is specify the direction of the fade. Okay, so to do that, we use this set option here. And then when I move into my 3D view, you can see we've got this anchor and it's got number one next to it. So what we need to do is specify our first anchor point. Now this is the point in which you want to fade from, in which case I want to fade from the left hand side of this shape to the right hand side. So I'm going to click on the left here. You'll see now that I have a number two next to my anchor and you can see I've got a line pulled from my anchor point from where I first clicked. So now we need to specify our second anchor point. So this is the direction in which you want to fade your component. So I just want to go like a basic left to right. So I'm just going to go across and I'm going to click my second point. Okay. So now we're just going to go over to our view control here. And we're just going to look at this up the Y axis over here. We'll just select that just to reignite that form. Okay, so at the moment it's fading down at 50% and we can increase this on our slider and you can see at 100% it's just totally fading that down. And this is a percentage of the kind of original height here. Okay, so if we had that at 0%, that's what it looks like. And then at 100%, that's what that looks like also. To unset your fade, just simply uncheck it. So now we're going to look at the tilt. So similar to the fade we do need to set anchor points for that um, but this time what we're doing is we're creating an angled base height so again let's just go back to our view control go back to the top view we're going to check the tilt option here we're going to use a set option click to create our first point click to create our second point and again let's just take a look at this up the y-axis this time we're doing this based on an angle and if we use a slider you can see that it's creating an angled base height or what we call a tilt. And you can increase that or decrease that. And tilts and fades are really useful for when you're wanting to create the illusion that one component is in front or behind another component. So that completes this tutorial on how to create a smooth shape. Thank you for watching.